Hello and uh, welcome to our Lent midweek service with our theme of letting go. I thought we'd try to do this service from this perspective, from the pew, from where you typically sit. So we'll have some time of prayer, uh, some words, and uh, even some music tonight. So um, let's begin. I want to invite you to take a moment uh, for some silence, and then I'll offer us a prayer of confession. Let us pray. I invite you now to offer your confession to God, those things that you have done or have not done, those things which you might be ashamed of, those things which you wish you had done better. Lord, we offer ourselves to you. We offer ourselves as living sacrifices. We pray and offer our confession because we know that we don't measure up. We know that we make mistakes. We know that we fail to be the people that you have called us to be. We know that we have failed our neighbors, our families. And yet in the midst of all of that, you lift us up. You forgive us in your son, Jesus Christ. In his grace from the cross and the empty tomb, you remind us that we are your children and there is nothing that we could do that could separate us from your love. And so we rejoice knowing that we are forgiven, knowing that we have new life in you each and every day. You declare to us your sins are forgiven. Amen. I invite you to take a moment to just uh, reflect on the song that's going to play, and then we'll continue. Thank you. 
So I said that our theme for these Lenten Wednesdays is letting go. And one of the uh, passages that is chosen is Ephesians 4, 26 to 32. And I invite you to take a look at that at some point, but I'll give you the, the, uh, the background of it. When I was uh, years ago a camp counselor, I, I learned a song for this, uh, this passage, and I'll sing it to you in just a moment. But Ephesians 4, 26 to 32 begins, Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. And then it finishes, Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. I want you to imagine I want you to imagine that you have at the end of your dominant hand for me that's the right hand. I want you to imagine that you have a bucket. And that bucket is 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 a fixed to your hand. It almost is a it almost is a part of your being. It's almost a part of who you are. You you can't let it down. You can't shake it off. You can't do anything to get rid of this bucket. It goes with you wherever you go. And now I want you to imagine that every time there's a a pain, a hurt, a frustration, an anger, something negative. Every time something like that happens to you, a little tiny pebble goes into the bucket. Now, the first one, the second one, the third one, not a big deal. Yeah, you hear them rattling around inside there, and the sound might be uh, frustrating, the sound might be uh, difficult to live with, but so what? You know, it's just a little, little thing. And then, as life goes on, more and more of those little pebbles, those little disappointments, those little failures, those little sadnesses get dropped over and over. And now that bucket starts to fill. You can't see the bottom anymore. It's uh, just stones now. And then little by little, as it goes with all of our lives, those stones start to pile up. And that's heavier and heavier to carry. Eventually, if you're not careful, those stones will be getting up close to the top of that bucket. Now you're lucky if you can hold it just with one hand. You have to cradle the bottom with the other, and you're carrying it around. And you can get almost nothing else done when you're trying to make food or you're trying to drive the car or you're trying to go to the movies or whatever it is. There's that full, heavy, difficult bucket that you're carrying around. You want to put it down. You can't. But what if you could lighten it? All of those pains, all those hurts, all of that difficulty that's been piling up in that bucket all your life, what if you could lighten it? And you ask yourself, oh, I don't know, I'll try. Well, what you find out is because of the, 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 the anatomy of this bucket, you can't just dump it out on your own. <laughs> you can shake a little bit of it out, but you can't dump it out all by yourself. You need somebody else to help you. You need somebody else or some bodies else through their acts of kindness, through their acts of generosity, through their acts of charity, through all the, the good things that have happened, that one by one those stones get taken out of the bucket and set aside. It starts to get lighter. It starts to feel better. 
you don't have to drag it around with both hands anymore. Now you've got a hand free to drive the car and make the dinner and all that. And that's what Ephesians chapter 4 warns us about. It says, look, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Because when it does, it just gets heavier and heavier and heavier. Don't let all those little things pile up. See, the challenge is not so much that, that the stones are the problem. <laughs> we think the stones are the problem. The problem is the bucket. The problem is that we carry them around all the time. Everybody's going to have challenges in their life. But Ephesians chapter 4 says to us, don't carry them around. Take them out of the bucket before the sun goes down or you're going to be miserable and it's going to pile up and pile up and pile up and pile up. So we really have two jobs in life. Our first job is to monitor our own bucket and, and, and set it aside when we can. Our first job is to monitor it so that it doesn't fill up with just the bad stuff. Our first job is to, to let it go. And our second job is to help others let it go. Because you see, with that free hand, you can take stones out of somebody else's bucket. With that free hand, you can bring light and kindness and generosity and charity into other people's lives and lighten their load so that by sundown, they've been freed. And that's how this passage ends. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. I promised you a song. And it goes like this. It's an old camp song. Be kind one unto another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as you, for Christ's sake, has forg been forgiven. Do, 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 doodly do. Ephesians 4.32. Well, there you go. Even as you, for Christ's sake, have been forgiven. And that's really what it is. Jesus went to the cross to carry all of our hurts and all of our pains and all of our troubles. And he died for us before the sun went down. Amen. I invite you to take a moment now to reflect on my words or words that you might have heard today as you listen to another song.
So let's finish our time together with some prayers. <clears throat> uh, our response tonight is, Lord, in your mercy. And then you respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we know that anger, hurt, pain, disappointment, all of those things are normal. It happens in our lives. What isn't normal is the ways in which we carry them around, dragging us down, making us angry, bitter, sad. You hold out for us something better. You hold out for us kindness, tenderness. Help us to receive that from others and to give it to others so that we may not be trapped in a cycle of pain and hopelessness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, our world is still wrapped in a health crisis. From every corner of the earth, people cry out in pain and fear, wondering what will happen next, wondering if our economic system will survive, if our healthcare system will survive. But you know this isn't the first time, and you know that we've been through this before as your people. So remember us and help us to see hope in even the darkest moments. And help us to care for one another. And we pray especially tonight for medical personnel, first responders, scientists who are working on cures, all the people who've reached out to help neighbors in this time. Help us to be the best of ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, hear now our own prayers for those who are celebrating and those who are struggling, those who know joy and those who know difficulty, those who know peace and those who are wondering what will happen tomorrow. Help us and hear us as we raise their names to you now with our voices or with our hearts. The Bell family, the Blade family. Lord, we're over our family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now let us pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory now and forever. Amen. Well, I hope this has been a good time for you and we will see each other again soon. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace.